everybody. Welcome to the sea lion exhibit here at the Houston Zoo. My name is Sophie. I'm the sea lion supervisor here and I'm joined by a few of our amazing California sea lions. We have Jonah, who is our oldest and our dominant male. And we have Camilla, who is also one of our adult females. And she is the head honcho of our ladies here at the Houston Zoo. And they're being joined by a few of our sea lion trainers. We've got Amanda, who is closest to us here, with Jonah. We'll get a little introduction and a good morning wave from Jonah. And over behind them, we have our trainer, Krista, with Camilla. And what we're gonna do, this morning we're gonna have a fun little morning training session. And we're actually gonna step out onto the Sea Lion Beach to join our trainers. And our hope is that we can give you guys a close up behind the scenes, so to speak, look at how we care for our animals, the relationship we develop with our sea lions, and how above all else, those are our number one priorities here at the sea lion department and really across the whole zoo. So are you guys ready to step on in and move a little bit closer? Okay, follow me. is upper beach and then we've got lower beach not too uh, high tech or some definitions it just helps us explain where we're gonna be where we're gonna move around one of the things you see here is a multi trainer training session so Amanda's working Jonah Krista is working Camilla so communication is really important throughout all of these training sessions not just between the trainer and the animal but between the two trainers they're gonna to wanna to communicate where they're moving, what they're doing, and then also where they need to be. So if Amanda wants to move over to the other side and switch spots with Krista, they'll just talk back and forth and we train our sea lions to be comfortable with us communicating, making it very clear when we're talking to them and when we're talking to another trainer or perhaps to our guests. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start out with a little bit of a morning med check. So a med check is basically just our opportunity to every day get a good look at every single part of our sea lions so that we are sure they're in optimal health. They are trained cooperatively to present all of their body parts, whether it's a flipper, we can look at their eyes, it can be an open mouth so that we can look them over. They're also trained to be okay with us touching them all over their bodies. And this allows us to really get that hands-on feel to make sure that everything feels and looks normal. I think we have some questions coming in. Let's see what we have here. Okay, Channing is wondering how much fish do these guys eat and how often? It's a very good question. Our sea lions here at the Houston Zoo eat a between 10 to 20 pounds of fish per day per sea lion and they get about three to seven training sessions every day, again, per sea lion. And Noelle is wondering where they come from. These guys are California sea lions, so as a species, they are located along the west coast of the United States, all the way up north to Oregon, Washington, all the way down to Baja, California. These specific sea lions are from different places. So Jonah actually has a great story. He was born off the coast of California in the wild and he was rescued as a very young pup separated from his mother and deemed by the federal government to be non-releasable, which is why he lives with us. Camilla was born under human care. So she was born in a marine mammal facility. Look to the center of the pool, everybody. Yay! And uh, she's lived with us ever since she was about 10 to nine months old when she moved here to the Houston Zoo. All right, Luke, very good question. How old do they get? Sea lions under human care can live to be into their late 20s or early 30s. Jonah's actually gonna be 23 years old this summer. He's in excellent health. And Camille will be 16 years old. Christina is wondering how long they can hold their breath. California sea lions can hold their breath for up to 20 minutes. However, that's not gonna be their average length. That is gonna be a really big male that can get to be about six to 800 pounds holding their breath in a very extreme situation where maybe they really need to dive for that food. 
but on average, these guys will probably hold their breath for closer to two to five minutes, short dives to look around, swim underwater, or maybe hunt for some fishes out in the Pacific Ocean. Jennifer is wondering, do they feel real smooth? They do. So these guys are marine mammals, which means they are covered in hair, but their hair is very short and very, very smooth. So it's actually hair you can see on, the, on their bodies. And every summer they molt, which means they shed all of their fur and grow in new fur. And at that time, if you give them a rub down, a little bit like Amanda's doing here with Jonah, giving them that tactile, you can end up with hundreds of little sea lion hairs on your hands. They kind of look like eyelashes. Now Addison is wondering if they like cold or hot water. These guys live in very cold water. Well, especially very cold for us Houstonians. Uh, we keep this pool on a very big chiller, so it stays between 60 and 65 degrees. That west coast of the United States is gonna be even cooler, but I'll tell you what, our pups really like a nice hot water bath for enrichment for fun in the wintertime when it's cold. Okay, Henry would like to know what muscles they use to propel themselves. Well, you can see these sea lions, this is actually one of the characteristics of a sea lion versus a seal. They have these very large front flippers. If you move over here to look at Jonah, you can see him walking on those front flippers and we'll go ahead and show those flippers off a little bit. There he is. And that's what they're using to push themselves through the water at speeds of up to 25 miles per hour, which Camilla is answering your question right there. That's five times faster. I was telling you, it's five times faster than Michael Phelps. You're impressive, we know. Now these front flippers, these big front flippers, that's the sea lion characteristic. Seals have very small front flippers, just about the size of maybe a human hand, and seals will swim using their back flippers. Sea lions also have big back flippers, but they're gonna use them more as rudders, maybe some steering whereas seals use them to propel themselves. Now what you're seeing, you saw some of the med check behaviors. Here is the back flipper present, which allows us to get a look at those back flippers, that underside of the belly. It also allows us to take one of our girth measurements. So we get our sea lions weights once a week, but we can also get measurements on them and we can measure those hips when they're in that big standing back flipper present. Now, John is wondering if these guys have predators, and they do. Out on the west coast, out in the wild, Camille is doing her best impersonation of, actually, could be either one of their predators, which are sharks and killer whales. Now, killer whales, a lot of times people think of them living way north, up in Alaska or maybe Washington, but killer whales, orcas, do come as far south as Mexico, Southern California and definitely in that central coast, that kind of Monterey Bay area and uh, Southern California where these guys are very, very prevalent. Landon is wondering, do they have a favorite fish to eat? Amanda, would you show us what Jonah's favorite fish is? Typically here at the Houston Zoo, we feed them a few different species of fish. This is a herring. We also feed them capelin, which is this fish. And capelin is a lower calorie uh, fish. They eat more of it. It's kind of like the nice salad or a vegetable of their diet. Whereas the herring is like the chocolate cake. So it's gonna be their favorite, but maybe they don't get quite as much of it. If you really wanna do some of those hard to behaviors, they're gonna get a lot of that herring. It's like if you get me to really get up out of bed at about five in the morning, nice and early, I want that really good cup of coffee to reward myself. Aaron is wondering why they are called sea lions, and that's a very good question, as these guys are not feline at all. So Jonah's gonna give us a demonstration of why they're called sea lions. And <coughs> And now Kamiya. So sea lions, when they vocalize, it can sound an awful lot like a roar, especially when you might be, imagine yourself as a fisherman coming into the coast and it's very foggy and you can't see anything and all you can hear is all that roaring. Also, a lot of sea lion species have really big necks and longer hair around their necks and their heads, which look a little bit like a mane. Ginny is wondering, do we brush their teeth? We do. Good observation, Ginny. She saw that toothbrush 
sitting over here by Amanda and Jonah. We brush our sea lion's teeth about once a week. And as you can see, sea lions have black teeth, or Jonah has black teeth. And I'm wondering if we could have a raise of hands. You can do it at home, that's fine. Do you guys think sea lions are supposed to have black teeth? Everyone nod their heads yes. We're all nodding our heads at home together. Sea lions do have black teeth, and the toothbrushing is not required to necessarily for their tooth care. It's more for the health of their gums. And it's just one more extra thing that we can do to contribute to their welfare here at the Houston Zoo. And Gavin is wondering how high they can jump. So those big front flippers we were talking about, they can actually propel sea lions off the surface of the water up to 10 feet, which Kamiya is really our best demonstrator. So we'll have Christy and Kamiya do a nice, a big old buoy jump. So you'll see Kamiya actually could push that buoy up a little bit. She is our most athletic and really go-getter sea lion that we have here at the Houston Zoo. These guys have very, very individual personalities. Kamiya is a hard worker. She's more serious. She's very focused. She's brilliant. And she takes a little bit longer to develop trust with people. Now Jonah is the definition of a laid back dude. He's pretty comfortable with most everybody. He makes new friends easily, and he loves spending close time with his keepers. Got some more questions in, let's see what we have. Okay, William is wondering, how smart are they compared to dolphins? So dolphins are one of those very well-known, very intelligent marine mammals. They're also gonna have a little bit of a different intelligence. So sea lions can be compared to a very, very intelligent dog. Maybe your border collies, those dogs that are gonna be doing those incredibly um, in-depth trainings and agility courses. Sea lion's closest living land relatives are actually bears and wolves. All right, Lexi is wondering how they use their whiskers. Now, these are called, the, the fancy science word for these are vibrissae. And Jonah actually has a fun cue where he can display his whiskers. We'll have Amanda show you that real quick. No, oh, not your tongue. that's your tongue. You so he can okay. stick those whiskers yeah, out. Okay. And actually, if uh, we pan over to me, I'm gonna have everybody kind of join me. If you guys take your fingers and kind of rub the tips of your fingers together like this, that's maybe as close as we can come to knowing what their vibrissae feel like. So imagine you have those very sensitive fingertips on your face. And it's one of those tools that they can use to catch high, fast moving fish. So these guys are high speed predators. They do have predators themselves, but they are catching fish. So those sensitive whiskers, those really powerful front flippers and very flexible necks are some of the features that make them amazing high speed predators. We have another question. Love all these questions. Holly is wondering how far can they swim before getting tired? That's an extremely good question, Holly. And I don't have an exact answer for you. Sea lions can migrate. They can swim for hundreds and hundreds of miles because these guys can actually swim um, in a pretty relaxed fashion. While they can swim up to those speeds of 25 miles per hour, they can also just give one big push with those flippers and cruise along for quite a while. And my guess is that a sea lion like Jonah will probably get tired a little bit faster than a sea lion like Kamiya. Okay, Britton, what is the difference between seals and sea lions? Excellent. This is one of our favorite things to point out to our guests. So Jonah will demonstrate the first difference. If you look on the side of Jonah's head, we're gonna get nice and close here. You can see those little external ear flaps. Now those are a sea lion characteristic. They're called external pinnae, P-I-N-N-A-E. And sea lions have these, also fur seals. So the name can be confusing, but both fur seals and sea lions are called odoriids, which is eared seals. Now true seals, which are phocids, just have a hole in the side of their head, so their heads are completely smooth. That's difference number one. Difference number two is gonna be the way that they swim. We talked about those really big front flippers. <laughs> really big front flippers. And that's how they sea lions swim through the water. They push themselves with those front flippers. Whereas, oh, here she goes, pushing through the water, pushing up out of the water. And actually sea lions are excellent climbers. They can scramble up rocks really easily due to these front flippers. 
Now, uh, seals have very small front flippers and they swim using their back flippers in a side to side motion. So Camille is gonna demonstrate the last difference, which is gonna be the way that seals and sea lions move on land. This is Camille's best seal impersonation. We're all gonna from home give her a big round of applause. Good job, Camille. Seals do not have the ability to rotate their hips up underneath themselves. So granted, she was using her hips a little bit there because she's a sea lion, but seals just lay on the ground. There it is. There's a true seal impersonation. And I'll tell you what, that's Jonah's favorite impersonation to do because it just means he gets to lay there. So sea lions are gonna flop around on their bellies kind of like a caterpillar, it's called glumping. Now sea lions have the ability to rotate their hips up underneath themselves and they can walk on all four flippers kind of like a dog you can see Camille can move really easily up and down these stairs and she's rotating those back flippers and tucking them up underneath themselves so there are your differences between seals and sea lions okay we've got madeline wondering what do they smell like now interesting question when these guys are swimming around throughout the day if we were to go up to jonah right now and smell him he really wouldn't smell like much his his breath is a little fishy um, and then sometimes in the summertime, which is breeding season, Jonah can get a rut smell. So it's kind of a hormonal breeding season smell. Now, these guys sleep on land, and when they sleep on land, they dry out, and when they dry out, they get very, very stinky. So, quite smelly when they're dry. And Landon is wondering, how much time do they spend on land in the wild? And actually, a good amount. These guys are going to save their energy for when they have to go on those foraging trips and are hunting for fish out in the wild. So they're going to uh, really try and save up that energy and they'll spend a good amount of time on land just resting. So we're gonna do, take a couple more little questions here, but we are, we have our training trainers that are getting low on the amount of fish in their buckets, but we won't wrap up the live. We're just gonna move off so that the sea lions can move from a training session to an enrichment session. So I will answer this question and <laughs> Jonah's gonna call me. I think I'm gonna try and pronounce your name right. Einar, Enar, I appreciate your question. It's how often do they use echolocation? Now dolphins do use echolocations, but sea lions do not. These guys only uh, will vocalize. And you can see Jonah does have kind of a big head but he doesn't have that melon and the echolocation ability like dolphins. Camille is giving you a big wave. Jonah's saying thank you for joining the training session. And so what we're gonna do now is you guys are gonna follow me and we're gonna come off of our main beach. We're gonna move up to our deck so that the training session can wrap up. I'm gonna keep answering questions and then we're gonna give the sea lions some fun enrichment. So everyone's gonna follow me. Come on this way. Okay, I hope everyone liked the training session. We work with these guys 365 days a year, making sure that we are always engaging them. They're learning more of those training sessions and we're always doing fun stuff like that. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna come up here through this gate and swing it up. Okay, and then we'll get some more of those questions. As whenever we're entering or exiting and sharing space with our sea lions it's really important you kind of saw me looking over my shoulder making sure I was seeing what's going on that's because we were sharing their space we want to make sure we're really respecting them and all of their everything they need making sure they're comfortable they're not nervous they're okay having more people and then I'm always looking at my gates and my locks and my doors which actually reminds me I have a lock in my hand come with me really quick because locks are one of the most important parts at a zoo, right? We want to make sure our animal safety and our safety is number one. And you guys could see from our sea lions, they're nice and safe, but we always lock up their enclosures, test our locks, make sure we're safe. And now we're going to do some fun enrichment with the sea lions. So Palmer is wondering, does the roar hurt their throat? Sometimes it sounds a little bit like it, especially Jonah. Um, in that summertime, he can, he vocalizes a lot. It's part of that breeding season. He's constantly, it's not even the roar, the male sea lions will bark. So that's that rhythmic kind of barking you hear. It's very stereotypic of sea lions. 
Um, if anyone has seen Finding Dory, it's that uh, when the sea lion jumps up on the rock and they all go off, off, off. That's pretty much exactly what it means. So look out on the pool. Oh, to answer your question though, it doesn't hurt his throat, no. So go ahead and look out at the pool. Right now we have our sea lions getting some fun enrichment. Now this is foraging enrichment. So we have some felt kelp over here. We have a big five gallon water jug and mixed in with all that we have uh, fish pops, we have some loose fish and ice cubes in the, uh, the water. We have um, Kamiya, we have a little, a little uh, disconnection, but we're back. Kamiya's got a big old uh, kind of a bowl with ice and fish in it. Now watch Kamiya and this water jug. So she's got fish in there, and this is what we call a foraging strategy. And I told you Kamiya is very, very intelligent. She's learned that by bopping this water jug around, she can jostle it enough to get those fish out. And Jonah, in his own right, has learned a strategy that works for him, which is do nothing, float close by Kamiya, and when she gets the fish out, eat them. It works for him. Okay, so some questions we have is Emily wants to know how do you tell a female from a male? So as you're looking at Jonah and Kamiya, you can see that size is gonna be your best bet. Once these guys are full grown, male sea lions can reach up to six to 800 pounds, where the females stay closer to 200 to 220 pounds. So also the males are gonna have much bigger, thicker necks and a really uh, lar enlarged forehead, which is called a sagittal crest. Now Caroline is wondering, do they burp? Often our guests will actually uh, kind of confuse some of their vocalizations, especially a female sea lion's vocalizations for burping, but I don't think I've ever actually heard a sea lion burp. It's an interesting one. I think I'm probably gonna listen more and more now to see if they burp. Peter is wondering how many babies can they have at a time? Typically sea lions only give birth to one pup at a time. Very rarely uh, they could have twins, but it's most common that they just have a single pup. Uh, like I said, breeding season is the summer and it's also pupping season. So most sea lion pups are born between mid-May and mid-July. We've had two pups here at Houston Zoo in the last few years. They will be, I can't believe it, but three and four years old this year. And they were both born at the end of June uh, on the 26th and the 28th of June. Now Veronica is wondering, do they swim with their eyes open? And yes, often these guys, they can open their eyes underwater. Their eyes are very um, specially adapted to see very well underwater. And they can also see very, very well above water. Now, these guys often, if you're here at the zoo, you will actually see Jonah just cruising around with his eyes closed, just because he feels relaxed and laid back and he knows the layout of his home so well that he, and he can use those vibrissae to feel if there's anything kind of in his way. And Kimberly is wondering, are they in danger? That's a very good question. She, she knows us here at the Houston Zoo and our saving animals. California sea lions are not endangered. However, there are other sea lion species that are, including the stellar sea lion, which lives up in Alaska. So depending on the species, there are some, but California sea lions population out in the wild is doing very, very well. Jonah's just enjoying getting after this fish pop. He loves his big ice blocks and you can see him grabbing off his little chunks of fish. We'll freeze whole fish into big ice blocks for fun enrichment. And enrichment is gonna be anything that really enhances the life of our animals, play, forage. Sea lions are really playful, very curious. So we love giving them those opportunities to really show their personalities. And with perfect timing, looks like these guys have chomped up all their fun enrichment. They've had a very nice, very successful training session. And actually you guys helped us train our sea lions because by engaging them in opportunities like this and bringing cameras out there we're getting them ready for lots of different things that they could see throughout their lives we want to also just thank everybody for supporting the houston zoo in a, many different ways for saving animals in the wild here at sea lions we talk a lot about 
focusing on reducing our single-use plastics like using those reusable water bottles. And we also want to thank you for being with us in this very unusual time in our world and supporting us. We have the Emergency Zoo Fund going to help the Houston Zoo through this difficult time. You can learn all more about that on our website, which is houstonzoo.org. And really just some more supporting your community, the Houston Zoo, we couldn't love you anymore. And we hope you enjoyed being here with us at the Sea Lion team. And even though you can't be here with us in person, that you came for our Facebook Live. So stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time.